Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Cyril. I run a plant Instagram page called Cyril Cybernated, where I post about my plants, home decor, my cats, and anything in between all those factors. So today, to continue with my plant collection series, I decided to talk about my Hooperzias. So what are Hooperzias? Well, Hooperzias are a genus or a class of their own. They were reclassified from being part of the Lycopodium family, I believe. And they have this very graceful nature. Um, you know how I love trailing plants. And I noticed that on the plant Instagram scene, mostly Southeast Asians have epiphytic or um, Hooperzia collections in their entire plant collections. I've always been like um, enticed, or I would say a better term is I always admired how beautiful Hooperzias are, I guess. I think I've posted it and shared it before, but I do remember seeing them from like under trees or whatever from my grandparents' house in the province of the, well, one of the provinces in the Philippines. So I think that's where I um, would root, you know, um, that would be the base of where I, why I'm always like enamored um, at Hooperzias. So I do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Hooperzias, I believe. I had like eight or nine before, but um, those didn't survive after like two years. So today I will be, well, let's first talk about, I guess I'll just talk about um, from my oldest plants to my newest, I guess. That's gonna be. So one of my oldest Hooperzias, this one is a Hooperzia salvinoides. This one's one of my favorites because when I got it, I guess it was just this branch that was trailing and the rest grew, or maybe it was this one. So see how graceful it is? <laughs> and here's it. Now, what I really love about this is it's really graceful and see how the form is, it's really trailing. So I can't wait for this to trail some more. I've only had this for a little over a year or almost two years, I guess but it's super easy i guess um you also have to take into consideration that Hooperzia is like moderate or medium to high humidity and where i live that's not really hard to achieve although you can use a lot of humidifiers mine doesn't really turn on all the time anyways because our humidity or average humidity here at home is enough for them to thrive so it doesn't have a lot of crispiness on this one it's just fairly easy and that's why i love this one Moving on, after that, I believe I got this one next around the same time. So this one is hmm, a Hooperzia phlegmaroides, which is a um, Fiji layered tassel. So when I got this, of course, it was just this branch, actually this one. These two stems are just new. And what happens with this one is, of course, it also trails gracefully like this. And through time, it just keeps on putting out two segments. So eventually, it'll, it's really like it has a fanning kind of nature, which is really good. And here's a close up on the leaves. Those are really beautiful. Notice how this one doesn't also become crispy because I believe, like, you know, just the humidity here at home. This one is on my west facing shelf. If you guys follow me in, in, on Instagram, I have this like huge shelf where I stuck all, stick all my smaller plants and this one trails there. It doesn't get a lot of light, but it's still happy. And this one is also in a planter that doesn't have any drainage. I think I got this from Target. And it's still in its cocoa coir. It has a little bit of charcoal inside, you know. And yeah, I just keep it moist all the time and it's so far ha um, doing well. So again, this is a Hooperzia phlegmaroides. And then moving on, this one's a smaller one. So this one's really cute. It's a Hooperzia tetrastichoides. I am probably saying the names wrong, but look at the nature of this one. This one it reminds me like a, of a tree leaf. And it also forms segments and it fans through time but it just kind of, kind of looks super leggy, but I'm not mad. See how long it is. Now, recently this one suffered a little bit because I tried to put it in my bathroom. Apparently it was happy because of all the light. Our bathroom has a skylight, but I guess it, it, it was drying too fast and I couldn't keep up. So when I moved it here 
I keep it under a grow light and the this room's humidity is fairly high all the time and it's fairly humid because this window faces the beach side so we do get a lot of humidity and a lot of circulation and it likes it that way and this one is well this one i just missed every night so see how it's still well it's probably not fitting for this planter but i wanted to keep it this way i was hoping i could like put it on the wall bathroom wall and it trails like that but it won't work so i'm just gonna hang it in my shelves and so far the terracotta is fine with the hooperizas although they love moisture more but um it works for this one so yeah this is a hooperizia tetra stichoides i'm just gonna put the names on the screen so you could look them up check the hashtags on instagram Fair, de well definitely the the care that i use for all my hooperzias or lycopodiums is the same so next would be this one this one is i guess my newest in my collection i just acquired it this year is it this year yeah i think so <laughs> this one is a hooperzia tetra sticha tetra sticha sticha and this one's really cool too so i'm gonna focus on the leaves here and same planter that i ordered online from an orchid website and what i love is that the segments are quite different see how they are like what's a good term like quadrangular this one's more rounded and tassily this one's like it has a very geometrical um tendency a ten, um geometrical kind of pattern on its leaf growth so that's quite interesting and i love it i can't wait for this one to trail some more so so far the newer segments at the bottom are new growth in my home and I just want the top ones to like thicken up. So imagine if they, you will have like three segments that will continue to put more segments and will become thicker at the bottom. That's really nice. Next would be this one. This one's a more common form. It's a Cuperzia numularifolia, I believe, or numularoides. I don't know. So this one is like the thin form because I used to have like a broad form, but then that didn't survive winter. So they have really flat segmented leaves. And this one, although it's not looking its best, but I'm just glad that it's still alive and still putting out new growth. Now this one I find to be harder compared to the rest of my Hooperzias, maybe because they were imported from, I would say Thailand and then just sold instantly and that didn't give them time to acclimate. But so far this one's doing well. Um, it used to be a bit longer like maybe one more segment longer, but those segments died in the winter. So these are all the new growths during spring and summer, which is still cute. So I'm just glad this one is still alive. This one though is in sphagnum moss and it's in a net pot. And I just keep it in a self-watering pot that I don't really, I failed at keeping um, wet or moist all the time, but it's still alive. It's actually, up in this this shelf so let me put it here and lastly oh no second to the last rather so this one is um Huperzia phlegmaria so this is the um now let's talk about other than general care so basically i don't feed my Huperzias. well i fed them by mistake but you wouldn't if you ever want to feed them just super low or weak strength of fertilizer because these epiphytes don't really require a lot or maybe an air plant fertilizer would well work as well um, but yeah it will really burn the roots if you're not careful or the leaves rather so i'll talk about some of the problems that i have like this one although it's still connected to the main plant if you notice that your leaves will turn just brown and crispy and the rest are like looking fine i'll see all these new growth there but this one is just not perking up no matter how I water. Apparently, it does show that it'll probably, or this segment has completely died, or it broke. Oh, actually, it, I confirmed that it broke at the at the top. So it wouldn't get all the hydration that it needs, and I've tried it several times, though, that I break the segment and try to root it in water. It didn't work, so um, as far as I know, for Huperzias, your mode of propagation is just by separating um, the segments or you know 
you're separating them into smaller um, sections. That's the word, um, the mode of propagation that I read about them. So this one apparently will have to go. It's such a shame because it's the longest one and I managed to keep it alive for a year. I think it's been a year since I got this from my friend who bought it from an orchid show when we still had the chance or opportunities to go to orchid shows. So yeah, that's my Hooperzia Phlegmeria. And then the last one is one of my favorites. I'm actually gonna receive another one soon, hopefully this next month. So this one's a Hooperzia squarosa. It's a Thai form, I believe. So the planter is from my friend Serene. Isn't it cute? I wish I planted it towards the right direction, but she has like a side pony. Um, this one is fairly easy as well. Um, all these segments are just new and this one is new. And just look at how fuzzy and cute the leaves are. So this one is in soil actually, and I just covered it with a lot of LECA or hydrotons. And I just like water it every few days. So this one, I recently ordered a larger specimen for hopefully it comes and arrives perfect next month um, from a US based seller. I don't know how that will, you know, acclimate or even adjust to my home, but in general with my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Hooperzias that I actively keep alive and hydrated, they're fairly easy for me. So I just wanted to be aware of these genuses or this group, um, plant group that is not really like popular now, but I just want you to have appreciation about Hooperzias or Lycopodiums. So, so yes, that was it for today's video. If you like this video, like, and if you're watching and you like this kind of content, subscribe and comment which Hooperzia you'd like to get for yourself. And yeah, thank you for watching. Have a great week. Bye-bye.